starting here for section 7.1 through 7.3, some very familiar or hopefully familiar aspects. So 5 squared really means 5 times 5, which we know is 25. Negative 5 squared, remember, it's like this, and that's a better way to write it than the other way around, um, which also yields an answer of 25. 3 squared is 9. Negative 3 squared, again, should be like this. Get in the habit of doing that. Also 9. So we move to this next idea of saying, okay, now we're going to solve for x squared. The inverse of squaring is the square root. And when I do that, I have to recognize that x can be either 5 or negative 5, and we write that as plus or minus 5. <clears throat> Again, when we're taking the square root, same idea here. So x equals plus or minus 9. And then when we do the square root here, and since we don't know the square root of 5, it will just be x equals plus or minus the square root of 5. Um, now, if we we're going to be doing something where we had to do simple radical form, that would mean if I have a number like the square root of 50, I'm trying to find the square root of 50, my process is I want to go through and identify numbers that I know the square roots of, right? I know the square roots of 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, 144. So we're checking for those numbers first. And we look and we say, what numbers go into 50 that I know the square root of? I know the square root of 25, and it goes into 50, and it goes into 50 twice. So it'd be root 2 times root 25, because taking it out the other direction, if we were going to do simplifying, and if I had the square root of 25 times the square root of 2, it would simplify into the square root of 50. But the advantage of what we did here is now the square root of 25 is 5, so it's just done. And then I look at that 2, and I wonder, is there a number that goes into 2 that I know the square root of over here? The only number that we have is 1, and since 2 is prime, we are finished with that spot. So in simplified radical form, the square root of 50 is 5 times the square root of 2. We're going to be doing a lot more of these. But before we get there, let me show you this. And then the square root of <clears throat> x to the 4th, the square root... The square root symbol is uh, it, taking us back a step. A, a phrase or an acronym similar to many of you, but you probably never had the R in there. Parentheses, exponents, roots, multiply, divide, add, subtract. Exponents and roots are inverse operations. Square root is the opposite of the exponent squared. Um, but that also means that square roots can be, and other types of roots, can be rewritten as uh, exponents. So this is can also be rewritten as x to the fourth to the one-half. The square root is the one-half. And when I have powers raised to powers, like we've done in the past, we multiply. So it's going to be have x to the fourth times a half which is equal to x squared. And it's an even power, so it would be plus or minus x squared. Because if I have negative x squared times negative x squared, that would be positive x to the fourth. If I have positive x squared times positive x squared, that would also be x to the fourth. Here, I have negative 7 squared raised to the one-half power which is negative 7 to the 2 times a half, which is negative 7 to the first, which is just negative 7. And uh, lastly, looking for numbers. So I, I don't always have decimals where I'm like, oh, I know the square root of that or something along those lines. But you're looking for numbers that look familiar, like 9. Um, so what I'm going to get here is I'm going to get 0.3. Uh, 0.3 times 0.3 will be 9, but then there's two decimal places. So that's the 09 for the two decimal places. Uh, you're going to see some more of these two, so just kind of being heads up and be ready to get more familiar with that as well. Here, again, multiplying and dividing are... So if I multiply something many, many, many times, I can use exponents. And if I can use exponents on them, that means I can use roots on them as well. So I can split this entire thing up as the square root of 4, because they're, it's all inside of here, all multiplying and dividing, no adding and subtracting. So I'll square root of 4 times the square root of x to the 4th 
over the square root of 9 times the square root of y to the 6th. And then I start going, all right, square root of 4 is 2 <clears throat> times, and we already did this one, square root of x to the 4th is x squared. In the denominator, square root of 9, that is 3. And then down here, I'll just do it this way. The square root of y to the 6th is equal to y to the 6th to the 1 half, which is y to the 6 times a half, which is y to the 3rd. So this would be 3y to the 3rd in the denominator. And that would be simplifying completely using square roots. Cube root. What I did here on the right is write down all my cubes. 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Uh, 3 times 3, this is 27. 64, 125. Those are going to be the most common cubes that we're going to be running across. So also not a bad idea to just have those in the top of your head. Um, when we do the cube root, though, the cube root of 8 is just 2. It's not negative 2. The reason why is if I did negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, negative times a negative, times, I've, got an, I've got an odd number of negatives. Here the answer would be negative 8. So I can take the cube root of a negative number. I cannot take the square root of a negative number. If my root is an odd number, I can take a root of a positive or a negative. If my root is an even number, so square root, fourth root, sixth root, I cannot take the square the those roots, even roots of negative numbers. So we just did this. We're just going to rewrite it again. Roots as exponents, 5 to the 1 half. This would be 5 to the 1 third. And this would be 5 to the 4, sorry, not 4, to the 1 fourth. If I had 5 squared to the 4th, then that would be 5 to the 2 fourths, which is 5 to the 1 half, which is the square root of 5. <clears throat> this one I would rewrite as 4x minus 1 squared all raised to the fifth, 1 fifth power. And then this would be then 4x minus 1 to the 2 times a fifth, which would be 4x minus 1 to the 2 fifths. And I am done there. I cannot go any further. An instinct or for some would be say, well, can't I bring this in on each of those? And the answer is no, because like I said, if you multiply many, many times, that multiplying becomes exponents. Here, though, I have a subtract in the middle. Well, subtraction is not multiple multiplication, so I cannot then bring an exponent in on there. Negative exponents, recall when we were doing negative ex exponents, that means if I want to simplify that, I have to bring that to the other side of the fraction bar. So it'd be 1 over 36. Here, I have 1 over 6 to the negative 2. Again, the negative 2, move that whatever the, the negative exponent is on moves to the other side of the fraction bar. So then this would be 36. I do that just as a quick refresher as we get into more complicated things. Now here what I have, <clears throat> I have z's, this is to the one third power, this is negative fifth power. These cannot combine because they're not the exact same powers. However, when I multiply, because again, multiplying is repeated, multiplying is exponents, I can do this. So I would have z to the two thirds, times z to the one-third minus, and then bring the next z to the two-thirds, times z to the negative fifth. When you have same bases, they're both base z, and multiplying, properties of exponents, says we add the exponents. So z to the two-thirds plus a third. So that's going to be just z to the one power. And then over here I have same bases, so it's going to be z to the two-thirds, plus negative 5, and now you got to do fractions, right? <clears throat> negative 5 as a fraction is negative 15 thirds, so it's negative 15 thirds. Those together would be minus z to the negative 13 thirds, which means this is then z minus 1 over z to the 13 thirds. So writing it as a positive exponent means that I have to take, if it's a negative exponent, it goes to the other side of the fraction bar. 
These don't switch around, but rather whatever is being taken, the z is to a negative power, so this z has to drop to the denominator, and then its power goes to positive. Here we have something that looks sort of similar, but now we've thrown in some really weird looking exponents on there. It's gonna be the same process that we've done when we have two binomials and we're multiplying. Some of you like doing FOIL, first, outside, inside, last. So I'm gonna have first x to the one-third times x to the one-third outsides plus two x to the one-third inside minus 5x to the one-third, lasts minus 10. These are same bases in multiplying, so those exponents add. One-third plus one-third is two-thirds. And now here we have it, and I'm counting, I have two x to the one-thirds, I have negative five x to the one-third, so grand total I have negative three, so I'm gonna change this here to, instead of plus, gonna change that to minus, negative three x to the one-thirds. And then I have minus 10. And then again, I'm done at that point. There's nothing else I can do because in order to add, they have to be the identical variable. X to the two thirds, X to the one third, not identical variables, no variable here. The proper method on this, if, if you can simplify, is to do them individually. So we have the square root of nine is three, the cube root of eight is two, so my answer is six. What I cannot do is somehow take this and it's 9 to the 1 half times 8 to the 1 third. I cannot combine these in any way because they're not the same base nor they're the same root. What I'll see is a really big mistake that people do. They'll go, oh, it's the square root of 72 because they multiply 9 times 8. But you can't mix and match because for the same reason that we can't mix and match when we're doing, uh, same, they got to be same bases when we multiply. Um, these are different exponents. So then here, like I said before, the, the quick and easy way, since I'm looking at this and seeing it's all multiplication in the numerator and denominator, and it's only division, no adding and subtracting, this root, again, because multiplication, excuse me, exponents are a series of multiplications, so roots can be used to counter that, for lack of a better word. So I'll have x to the fourth, <clears throat> to the one-fourth times y squared to the one-fourth all over 16 to the one-fourth times z to the eighth to the one-fourth. x to the fourth to the one-fourth, when I'm taking powers raised to more powers, that's when we multiply. Four times a fourth is one, so this is x times y, two times a quarter is a half. 16 to the one fourth is two. Uh, and then z to the eight to the one fourth, so eight times one fourth or eight over one, that would be z squared. Solving, eventually we're gonna be getting to this place too. Um, similarly, in. Uh, I should say partially similarly and a little bit different. When we're solving, we want to have our square roots on one side only. So if I have square root of 2x, I'm going to have square root of 2x over here. I need to move that 5 to the other side. So it's minus 5, minus 5. Notice, though, that the 5 is not under the square root, so it can move over. That square root traps things until a later point. So that's now negative 5. And then... The opposite of square root is squaring. So if I take this and I square this, and I square this, I would have 2x to the 1 half squared. And then powers raised to powers, a half of 2 is 1, so I'm left with 2x. On the right-hand side, negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25 divided by 2x equals 25 over 2. No need to reduce, leave it just like that. And then lastly, if I have something here, the biggest no-no I'm going to see is people are gonna go here and they're gonna do that. And we cannot, like we've done some where we've, <coughs> excuse me, brought in the exponent, but that's when we're multiplying. Because again, 
exponents is multiple multiplications, but I have an add here. So that's really bad math if I bring those in. So I can't do that. So instead, I have to think, what does this mean? It means square root of x minus 1 plus 5 times square root of x minus 1 plus 5. And then I'm going to go back to FOIL. First, I have x minus 1 square root times x minus 1 square root. So it's going to be squared outside 5 times the square root of x minus 1 inside 5 times the square root of x minus 1 lasts 25. <clears throat> square root of something squared is x minus 1. It'll just be itself. Plus 10 square roots of x minus 1. Because there's 5 here and there's 5 here. And then I have plus 25. And I'm not yet done because I then have x plus 10 square root of x minus 1 plus 24. Because that's negative 1. Now it can be combined with the 25. That would be then a final completion of that. So there's a little bit more on 7.1 through 7.3, how to deal with exponents uh, as radicals and roots, and a little bit with solving there at the end. We will pick up in the next three sections how to then do more solving for x, uh, and then we'll actually do some factoring, and then uh, some more complicated factoring, that is, with square roots involved. That is all. See you soon.